Great afternoon, everyone. I'm Kyle Winters, recruiting manager here at NCSA, next college student athlete. I'm joined this afternoon by senior recruiting coordinator Danny Koenig. Danny, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, for those of you who have tuned in before, usually Dave and Kamisic and I are uh, here hosting our Facebook Live. David's out in uh, Las Vegas working with our, our office out there. So Danny's hopping in with him, former college coach, former college athlete. Going to be a great resource as well. So if you guys have any questions, if you have any comments or anything comes up, whether it's about our topic today or anything else, feel free to throw them in the comments box. We'll be happy to answer them at the end of the conversation. But to get things going, we wanted to talk about a topic that's very top of mind right now for most student athletes. We're six weeks month and a half, two months into the school year now, most student athletes are getting started with their fall seasons. We're getting prepped and ready for the winter seasons. And before you know it, it's gonna be club season for a lot of sports going into the winter, spring, and summer as well. So what we're gonna talk about today is just you know, what student athletes should be focusing on, you know, what your guys' high school club coaches role should be within this process. If they are involved, that's great. We're, we're all about that. but. We want to make sure that you guys know what you should be doing in addition to the help you're going to be getting from your coach as well. So, Danny, you're a former coach yourself. When it comes to your expectation as a former college coach, what are you looking for or what are you expecting when you're talking about high school club coaches and their involvement with student athletes? Yeah, I think it's a really important topic because obviously, you know, we don't want to make it seem as though your coach is not important or aren't going to be a part of this process. It's not really what we're getting at because ultimately, if you have someone that's willing to work on your behalf, that's fantastic. Right. End of the day, you have someone being an advocate for you, and that connection can be very beneficial. But at the same time, we also understand that it is not that coach's job to get you recruited. All right. So they have a role, you know, and they're very important, and they're very influential. But you basically need to take the reins to get set up initially, and a college coach, or excuse me, a club coach or a high school coach can then step in at some point. I mean, is that... Is that pretty much your? Yeah, that's that. I would say that's probably a great way of putting it. I'm I'm a former club coach myself. I just finished up my last year of coaching in club softball for the last four years, and you know one of the big things that I focused on and talked about with the student athletes in my team on my program, and and really talked with my younger sister who's just in her freshman year in college right now, is that you know it's a huge bonus if I'm able able to help you out in the process as a coach. That's something that I want to do for you guys. At the same time, there are. 15, 20 of you. Some programs there might be 50, 60 of you and there's one to three coaches or maybe there's five coaches in a, a club that has 200, 300 student athletes in the program. So as much as I want to help you out in the process, I don't have the time of day. I have my own job. You know, A lot of people have their own family. They, they're married. They have their own kids. They have their own job outside of that. And at the end of the day, they're not necessarily going to be the ones who are paying for the student athletes college. So really what I told all the student athletes that I coached is that it's really going to fall on you. It's going to be your guys' responsibility to make sure you have the opportunities that are going to be best for you because everyone's going to be different. I can't necessarily cater to every single one of those student athletes. And I figure you as a former college coach, you probably wanted to hear from the student athletes more than anyone else as it was anyways. Absolutely, yeah. And of course, everything that he's telling you is from a guy who was drafted and played <laughs> at a very high level. So if he can't get it done for you, I don't really know the many guys that can, right? I mean, I mean everybody on this <laughs> this Facebook Live knows that I'm the butt of all the jokes here, so we can't be talking me up. That's, that's not how this goes. Oh, sorry. Sure you know. Yeah, new guy, sorry. <laughs> not a seasoned vet yet. But yes, he's absolutely right. Uh, other lives, other things going on, their own families, etc. Um, so kind of the degree to which they're going to be involved is basically once you ask them to. Um, that's only going to come after you have determined a list of schools that you're interested in and made contact with that coach. Because like you had said, a college coach is recruiting the student athlete. They're not recruiting the parents or the, the club coach, right? They really want to get to know the student athlete. Once they've gotten a sense for who that person is and they are interested in that student athlete, they're going to circle back and use the high school coach or the club coach as a reference, which have you actually... Had that happened? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, out at tournaments and such, I've, I don't think I've ever had a college coach call me or anything mm. of that nature. I've had college coaches reach out to me in my email asking about certain student athletes, mm. what I thought of them. So yeah, a little bit, but uh, much less than I, I would think. It's been a lot of college coaches trying to interact directly with the student athletes mm. that, that I've coached and, and worked with. Yeah, and I think even to that point, um, you know, when I was coaching, we would have pipelines, uh, certain club programs I was more familiar with and would rely on coaches. But again, as a student athlete, if you're a part of that club and you know that you know, you're know you graduating athletes into a college program, you need to make sure that that pipeline includes schools that you are interested in. Right? This is about relinquishing control over the process and making sure that you're taking necessary steps to actually make that thing work for you. 
Um, so that's, you know, it needs to start there. And then at some point, like I said, a, a club coach or a high school coach can be an advocate for you. I would hope that they are. It's very beneficial for a, a college coach as well to have that resource, but that's not really the genesis of all this. Yeah, and so we can take a look at just the season we're in right now. You know, it's, it's getting to be mid-October. Uh, most of the fall sports are probably about mid-season, maybe a little bit before that. So we can think about what's actually going on in this season. You know, we have volleyball, we have soccer going on right now for a lot of student athletes. We have some club baseball and softball going on right now, but they're in the thick of their season. Those coaches are focused on getting wins right now. Those fo coaches are focusing on developing their team. They're focusing on how do we get ourselves to the playoffs? How do we develop this team? How do I put the best winning program on the court? Maybe you're still trying to figure out how do we win games in the first place? So there's a lot going on right now for these coaches in this spring or in this fall season just with their own seasons and trying to be successful and trying to win games, trying to put a competitive team on the field or court every week or every couple days whenever they're playing. And, and we can start looking towards winter as well, which probably a lot of those coaches are focusing on just preparing themselves for the upcoming season. Tryouts, right? Figuring out who's even going to be a part of that program. I mean, there's a registration process, parent meetings, all kinds of stuff that's getting geared up for at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge on both sides, right? For the student athletes who are really relying on their coaches to kind of maybe get this stuff done for them in one capacity, and then the high school and club coaches that want to help their student athletes, but you know maybe you're tied up with some other stuff, or maybe don't know how, right? And that's I think that's fair as well. So let's just say uh, you are fortunate enough to have a club coach or a high school coach who has some connections and is willing to help you. All right, here's a couple things. I have a list of things that uh, I think that every family and student athlete should be asking their club School. coach. Give us your list. I like yeah, that. so I have this list here, right? And this is something that I'll bring up when families bring this up. Well, our club club coach is going to do it for us. And again, that is fantastic, right? Rely on that. But um, the first thing that you would want to ask, how many direct college coach contacts do you have, right? Most coaches will probably say anywhere between one and 10, maybe at the most. Um, and, and that's a good place to start. And it can be a pretty easy pipeline. But again, what schools are they? And are those schools that your student athlete is going to be interested in? Right. If that school that they have a connection to knows the head coach very well over there, that school doesn't offer your major, that's not really going to help you out if you're looking to study engineering and they don't even offer that. Right. So do they offer the major you're interested in? Are those college coaches that your coach has connections with, are they actually recruiting players in your, in your graduating class for your position? Right. Are they looking for a student athlete like you? I think that's something to consider because you obviously don't want to show up and sit on the bench for three years behind somebody that has already been recruited ahead of you. Yeah, often overlooks that, that whether or not that school is still looking for student athletes in that graduation year. Some of that can be doing research with that school, looking to their current team, who's on the roster, maybe seeing who's committed to that program in a couple years above you, or if you're a senior, knowing whether or not they're recruiting that class, class at all is a huge aspect of making sure you're being efficient and effective with your time and not chasing down a school that's not even going to be looking at you. That's right. Yeah, so that's a big one. Are they actually recruiting players in your, in your grad class for your position? Um, what is the plan for building out contact with those college coaches? So let's just say you've gotten to it. Your club coach knows a college coach. It's a good fit. They have your major. They're recruiting your position. Now, what's the plan from there? And it needs to be very specific. All right, uh, forms of contact. Is the college, or excuse me, is the club coach going to step in and contact the college coach directly? Um, beyond that, uh, video, which is so important for so many um, of these college coaches to be able to evaluate a player just through NCSA, right? Do you actually have video that we could present to college coaches? What's the plan for that distribution? When are we filming the games? Are you going to be editing that? Are we responsible for editing that? You know, those sorts of things, because it's so vital for college coaches. Um, and then again, the one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, do we have time set up where you're gonna sit down and we're gonna lay this out as a game plan? And I think you guys start to see, this is a challenge, right? That's a lot of things that need to be covered that I don't know that necessarily always a high school or club coach can actually sit down and accomplish with every family. Yeah, one thing we think we talk about on a weekly basis is just that recruiting has a lot of moving parts. That it's not simple, it's not as easy as just hey, I email this coach and boom, they recruit me. Or hey, I just go play for the high school team, I play for the club, club team, I swim, swim for the club program, and all of a sudden that coach brings me into the program. There's a lot more moving pieces that go along with that as well. So it's not as easy as just one, two, three, by any means. That's right. And, and again, don't forget that the primary mode, the whole driver, needs to be the student athlete. 
Because even to that point, coaches don't want to hear from parents. And they're not looking for a club coach to reach out and say, hey, I've got this person. That might be nice. It might be kind of easy. But at the end of the day, you're trying to spend four years with the student athlete and you need to recruit somebody that you're familiar with. Yeah, and so in your your experience as as a college coach, I'm gonna guess that at some point, somewhere along the way, a parent or a friend or acquaintance or someone said to you, hey, I have a perfect person for your program. I have someone who I think would be great for your program. What were your first questions you would ask them? Uh, I mean, genuine, there's almost a little bit of skepticism right there. You need to understand where that person's coming from. And it's like, okay, but do you really know what I'm looking for? What makes, what makes this person perfect? Right. Um, so th- those are the immediate questions. Why are they perfect? What are their grades like? What are they looking to study? Are they looking for a small private school? Um, are they looking for scholarship money? You know, so all things to start to consider. And that's good. Again, you, you want to take those and those connections can be very successful. But at the end of the day, you're a little bit hesitant as a college coach. Yeah. Similarly, <laughs> with, with a club coach, if I were recommending a student athlete to a college coach, despite my background, despite whatever I've done, I, I would expect that college coach to say, okay, that's great, you know, I sound like a good player, send me some video. Let me see this student athlete, what they actually look like. They're gonna want more specifics beyond just that coach recommendation in 99% of the cases. Maybe there are some one-off situations out there where you know, it's the, uh, Mike Candreas is asking his best friend who coaches the Batbusters out in, in California or something of that nature. There are one-off situations, but for the vast majority of coaches, it's going to be, okay, that's great. Sounds like a good player. Send me some video. Give me something tangible so I can look at them as a prospect. If you even have video, if right? You have it, if right. you have it, and of course, then there needs to be a way to contact that family and the student, and that's kind of where we at NCSA step in. Like, hey, here's a resource that, you know, all the contact, tongue had to, excuse me, contact information and their video is in one spot that they don't ever, they don't have to ever outsource any of that. Yeah, and, and one of the, the biggest misconceptions I would say is that, you know, maybe my student athlete isn't good enough right now or maybe he's not someone or he or she's not someone that college coaches would be looking at like that at right now and, and with swimming you have that experience of knowing that hey probably some of their times aren't necessarily at the level that you're going to be looking at for a college athlete but that's very understood I mean if you could probably expound on that a little bit when it comes to projecting student athletes from freshman year or eighth grade what you're looking for when it comes to those student athletes envisioning them in college mm. It's one of the big question marks, the eternal question marks. Um, you know, do you recruit on potential? Sure, uh, there's an aspect of it that. Have you ever had a student athlete that you recruited that was an absolute stud that just didn't really pan out? Absolutely. Um, I think the bigger Guilty messages- right here, this, this guy. <laughs> this guy. Uh, <laughs> so um, I think, you know, there's, when you are recruiting a student athlete as a college coach, you talk about the intangibles um, and that's kind of where the, the club or high school coach comes in to kind of get a sense for their character, uh, their hustle. Are they coachable? Do they listen? Are they willing to learn um, to kind of project what their potential may end up being? Um, and that's that you need to kind of build into the fabric of your culture, what you are trying to build in order to recruit those kids to your program, almost regardless of their ability. And I think almost any college coach, you know, maybe save for some of the very, very high competitive levels, are just looking for people that want to contribute, that want to be there, that are going to be impactful, right, in more than more than one way, and really buy into your culture. And that's how you build a championship level program. Yep. Right. And that's a that's big part of his forecasting. And so Mm. those coaches, they're they're getting ready for the upcoming seasons, club, high school, college, winter, spring. All these things are coming up. Recruiting. It goes year round. These coaches aren't taking any time off. They're trying to figure out their plans for these upcoming seasons as well. So if you're not in your season right now, just know that it's around the corner and those college coaches, they're prepping for that time. They're getting ready to determine who they're gonna go watch, who they're gonna go evaluate, who they're gonna be making contact with. So regardless of what point you're at in the recruiting process right now, there's a lot you can start doing right now as well. Yeah, and target the off season because that's the time when coaches really focus on the recruiting aspect of it, not when they're in season. They're very focused on their team and doing well there, right? Ultimately, that's their job. But once they're in the off season is when you want to be contacting them, starting to build those relationships because they have more time. Awesome. You have anything to add on uh, on high school coaches, club coaches, their responsibility from from your college coach perspective? I just I think you know in summation, this falls on your shoulders. I, isn't nice. that a, is that's that great. did that's I use great. that correctly? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah. It. I went to state school. Replaced. So. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, this is your job, right? Your job to get recruited, to be in control of this process. We are here to help you with that at NCSA. Please use your high school and club coaches when it's appropriate. 
right? You cannot rely on them to do all this for you, but you can use them to a degree and leverage opportunities. Have them speak on your behalf because they know you the best, right? But they're not the genesis of all this. They're not gonna take it front to back, right? You have to do a lot of this on your own. Awesome, really good stuff. We'll go to some questions here. Again, if you guys have any other questions, throw them in there, I'll be answering them and, and uh, kicking questions to, uh, to Danny. I'll be answering some as well. Uh, first one, kind of getting off the bat, Ron asks, or uh, states really, and then asks, we don't want to be pushy about contacting a coach, but won't, don't want to wait too long either. My son attended a soccer ID camp and a school visit, and he loved the school, the coach and players, uh, loved the school coach and players. His last contact was sending a thank you message to the coach. Should he contact the coach and say he is still interested in the school or wait for a coach to contact him? He is getting ready to apply to the school. So it sounds like he's in senior right now. What are your thoughts? Keep pushing. Um, just because a coach didn't get back to you again isn't an indicator that they are not interested. They're just very busy people. Um, yes, if you're a senior, reach back out. Maybe another email, right? If you're comfortable with that. Call them up, right? You've already had an interaction with that coach. I'm sure they remember who you are. Uh, but that's the time to do that. That's exactly what they're looking for. And again, coaches are looking for student athletes to engage with them and express, hey, we're really interested. I mean, that's very flattering. And it's pretty simple for that coach too. Um, but yeah, try and further that conversation. Try and get an answer out of them. It's okay. They deal with that on a regular basis. Um, they should be able to tell you whether they're interested or not at this point. Yeah, and, and as a senior, it's really crunch time for you guys. So you know, ideally not putting all of your eggs in this one basket necessarily. Hopefully you've spread, spread out your information, have a couple different options for those underclassmen coming up. This is a good situation to look at that hopefully by the time you're getting into senior year, you have multiple different options that are very serious that you can eventually make a choice from. Really, senior year isn't for recruiting. Senior year is for a victory lap. Senior year is for being committed and enjoying your senior year versus working on the recruiting process. Mm. Um, Janelle asks a couple questions about baseball that I can probably dive into a little bit. Um, Janelle asks, how do you eighth grade baseball kids get seen by high school coaches? And I'll lump that in with her second question. Is it true you should stop playing travel baseball going into high school? So as far as getting seen by high school coaches, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, big ways would be doing camps at that high school going into, the, you know, when you're in seventh, eighth grade, doing camps at the school, working got workouts in front of the coach, doing summer workouts, going into the fall, playing fall ball. Uh, there's just a lot of different ways uh, if you know what school you're gonna be going to, but trying to develop a relationship with that high school coach early will be key to getting you in a good place for the upcoming four years. As far as quitting travel baseball, not something I would recommend. Uh, some coaches, are maybe not as enthused about student athletes going and playing travel club baseball. That being said, the majority of recruiting for baseball is going to be done in the summer and fall. So at the very least, you're going to want to be playing somewhere. Ideally, if you're going to some travel bigger tournaments, that's gonna be huge in playing where coaches are out to watch you. Very rarely are college coaches able to go out to high school baseball games. Yeah, and just briefly to expand on that, um, just keep the lines of communication open. That is a one-way street that is always open for student athletes and their families to connect with coaches. Depending on what division level they're looking at and what's permittable by the NCAA, they may not be able to get back to you. All right, just understand that. That's okay. They're still looking for you to reach out. There's a lot you can be doing to identify some schools that may be of interest, put together a skills video, highlight tape, whatever it is. So just keep chipping away at that stuff. Yeah, I haven't really thought about that. For, for, for like high school coaches, you could always send a video to the high school coach say, saying, hey, I'm going to be coming into the program next year. I'd love to be a, a part of the program. Better believe it. Couldn't hurt. Um, this is a kind of an open-end question. I don't know if we can answer it very specifically, but Sush, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, asks, how many college coaches is a good amount? Mm. Wow. What are your thoughts? Wow. How many college coaches is a good I don't know if we can number? answer that. I, you know, there's, there's not necessarily a specific answer. It's going to be different for everyone. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong, especially with early on casting a very wide net. Coaches are doing that. You might as well do that as well. Again, you can use the NCSA site to generate a list of schools that you might be interested in. If you're early enough in the process, Email them all. Why not? You know, 100, 100, 150. Yeah. I don't it's, know. it's not going to hurt you to do it. <laughs> no, no, it can't hurt um, by any stretch. And, and to some degree, there's some level of phishing that's going on as well. So you might only get responses from half of them. If you only send out 10, are you okay with only hearing from five? So yeah, that's the thing. It's a numbers game when it comes to recruiting. The college coaches are doing the exact same thing. They're reaching out to 100, a couple hundred student athletes on their side. So it's really about playing the game. David Kamisic talks about it quite a bit. It's about playing that same game coaches are, opening up as many opportunities as you possibly can. But at the same time, you know, the more options you have to choose from, the better off you potentially will be down the road. Um, 
Jenny asks, should my daughter take her junior year off from high school soccer to play travel with her club? This seems to be what all the juniors are doing on her team. What do you think? Situational. Um, and I apologize, I can't give you a better specific answer to that, but uh, in some cases, going with the club program is better. Uh, you can't necessarily control what comes and goes at the high school level. A lot of coaching changes. Sometimes that's their second or third job to be the coach. Um, you know, maybe the senior class or the junior class isn't up to the standard that you've been playing with. So maybe it makes sense to go out and, and train with a club team. But there is a social aspect there that's pretty fun. Um, I don't know. Do you have a take on that? That's a tough one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's about doing what's best for you guys. I know that we've spoken with and worked with a lot of student athletes who have given up high school sport, their high school sport, to focus on that club team. So yeah, I think it can be beneficial. It, it will be less of the, like the social high school atmosphere where you're out with your friends and get to see them every day. So it is a little bit of a trade-off. That being said, if you're going out and doing more competitive club soccer tournaments, you're playing in front of more coaches, you're doing something to further your actual recruiting experience, yeah, it's something that definitely can't hurt, but it's really about determining what's smartest, what's best for your daughter, what she's really focused on wants to do. Right, and I guess in, in a little bit more specific terms, as a junior, you need to start doing, you know, taking intent, you just need to, what am I trying to say? In, you, need to, you need to be intentful you need about to be the intentful. events you're going for. If you're playing club soccer, have a plan. Know why you are playing club soccer. Set yourself up for success in that regard. Don't just do it because everybody else is doing it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's still fun at this point. It should still be fun, but there should be some purpose behind it. We're going to this, this uh, tournament because ABC, these coaches are going to be there. So right. there should be a little bit more thought behind yep. it. Uh, Bill, Bill mentioned in here, this is more of a comment, but we used NCSA for my two oldest daughters' golf search. The system is great. We reached coaches and teams we would have never known about. So awesome, Bill. Glad things worked out for you and your daughters. That's, that's great. Um, so he's, uh, Greg asks, my son that is a freshman has been invited to many college prospect camps. Is it better to go to those or a big showcase? Hmm. Um, I always lean towards um, find the schools you like first and then figure out what camps they offer. Um, showcases can be very beneficial, but again, you need to figure out which coaches are there. Are they coaches at schools in which you are interested in? And then take inroads to actually make yourself visible. Because I know you guys have all seen that stuff before. You show up to the pitch, the court, whatever. There's kids all over the place, 300 teams, 50 college coaches. The coaches can't figure out who's who. The kids are trying to figure out which coaches are there. So just again, be in, uh, have an intent there um, and uh, make sure that you're targeting schools that actually make sense for what you're looking at. Absolutely. Um, I can lump a couple questions here together that I think um, really go hand in hand. It's, it's funny that they're from two different people, but really build off of each other. Um, Michelle asks, please explain the process for transferring from JUCO to a four-year school. Uh, the profile, we can get that fixed for you guys. Connect with your recruiting coach or call in CSA. We can update the junior college commitment on there. That's fine. But I wanted to go over the uh, junior college process and connecting with college coaches and Ernesto. My daughter is playing at, in a community college. She's looking at transferring to a D2 or D3 college. What are the restrictions for her and the steps for her to take? So we can probably talk about this pretty generally from a junior college standpoint, what that process looks like. And really the best way of describing it is exactly like your high school recruiting process. You're playing at a junior college now, Hopefully your junior college coaches have a little bit of a pipeline as well, have some connections with some D2, D3, maybe D1 coaches as well. But again, they're not necessarily going to be the main person that gets you recruited. It's about how well you do at the junior college, but also the work you put in. So you can still use your NCSA profile. You can get updated video in there. You can get um, your schedule up there. You can update your grades. Everything can be updated and sent back out to college coaches. You can still be working on it the same way. Yeah, the only other things I would add to that, um, check in on the eligibility side of things with the NCAA, right? Because uh, once that clock starts, it keeps rolling. Um, make sure that uh, the credits that you're taking are gonna transfer to that four-year university. You don't wanna take any steps backwards in that regard or uh, burn any eligibility in that, that way either. Awesome. Uh, this is a really good question for you. I'm, I'm really intrigued to hear how you answer it. Um, this could be a personality thing, but mm. Lynn asks, is it appropriate to bring the team and or coaches candy or treats during an unofficial visit? Encouraged. Bring the college <laughs> coach food. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially this time of year, it's festive. You know, we're in the middle of Halloween and maybe even uh, maybe the, the athletes as well. Bring them something because... Uh, 
you know, they're poor, starving college children. They, what, what's your Halloween candy of choice? If wow. you're coaching right now this time of year, what would you hope that someone would bring you? I'm a big Kit Kat guy, uh, but I also think foreign candies are always kind of interesting. Foreign candies? Yeah. What know. are some foreign candies? I don't even I know don't what those know. are. Interesting, uh, like Dutch chocolates or, uh, I don't know, I like chocolate. Okay, so he likes chocolate. So if you guys uh, want to look him up on NCSA, hands of brownies, cookies, Danny's looking for you to send him some chocolates yeah. or baked goods. Apparently, so yeah. college coaches take him baked goods, take him uh, chocolate, take him Kit Kats. I think they're going to be pretty pumped about it. Honestly, I think like, so. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with uh, thinking. It's just being neighborly more than anything. A little bribery under the table, no big deal. Just <laughs> through way of your name chocolate fudge brownies. So I'm, I'm not against <laughs> it. I, I think that's a win. If I was a coach, I would be pumped if someone. Yeah. Anytime someone brings in the office, yep, get, bring it to me. Oh yeah. Um, Chris is asking about you know, higher price camps, and this is a little bit more of like a, a prospect. This is a little bit different, talking about IMG. Uh, are those types of things, high price camps, IMG, prospect showcases that are a little higher price, are those good for student athletes when it comes to recruiting? In short, yes. Uh, they can be very, very helpful and impactful. But again, you need to be smart about which college coaches are there. Are you interested in those coaches? Have you actually made contact with those coaches? Do they know that you're gonna be there? Right? Do they know where you're playing? Do they know your jersey number? Do they know your position? Are they recruiting that position for your grad class? So again, just be smart about it. Don't just go to any camp. Leverage those opportunities. They are a great way to get in front of college coaches, especially at a time where coaches cannot communicate back with you. I'm thinking the D1 and D2 scholarship offering programs, um, but they can evaluate it at a camp, and uh, that can be really impactful at an early age. Yeah, I should mention that we are the official recruiting partners of IMG, so you know, just making sure that that's something that's worth your time, that because that can be very pricey. If you're going to do one of those and nothing else, it's maybe not as worth your time as doing several more events that are maybe a little bit more or, or, or less expensive, but you get a little bit more exposure out of it. So again, it comes down to what's going to be important to you, what you want to focus on. Um, John asks uh, a couple questions here, and we can probably lump these together with Manny from YouTube. Um, well, so I guess that, that we could lump that last one in with Manny from YouTube about freshmen going to a lot of camps. Again, it's going to depend on what you're looking for, what you can afford, what type of exposure you're looking to get, what, what it is you're looking to do. But this is a really good question for you as well from John. Um, I know there's no athletic money from D3 schools. Will a student athlete get more academic money than, um, the other, than another student athlete with the same grades, test score, who doesn't play sports? So essentially... Are athletes getting more academic money, potentially, or merit-based scholarship money at a Division three school than other student athletes? Not students because they're not because they're athletes. No, um, and anybody that tells you anything differently is probably a little bit off base in that regard. But the fact remains that um, the at, at the Division three level, college coaches can act as a liaison between you and the financial aid department. All right, so they're really only willing to do that for you if, again, you have built those relationships, they are familiar with you, and you can utilize those, right? And in some cases, they have a direct pipeline to be able to tell you whether or not you will be admitted in certain cases and how much financial aid you would be looking at, right? It gives you kind of an idea, and then, of course, you can uh, apply for other scholarships outside of what financial aid or athletic scholarships can do for you, but... Um, yeah, they cannot offer you more money because you're an athlete. Okay, Christina asks, this will perfect for you again, what should you say to coaches you are emailing to meet with for men's swim? My son is a men's swimmer. So is, so is a Danny. That's right, yeah, I was a men's swimmer for a while. University um, of Wisconsin, he's being modest. That's right, yeah, that was a long time ago and I don't do it anymore. Look at this big, I mean, this guy is like bright, or uh, Lochte over here, just the broad shoulders. I've never felt so small on a camera before sitting next to him. <laughs> looks like he's about to go swim. Jack LaLanne tug a boat with his teeth. Wow, wow, I won't, I promise. Um, <laughs> so if you're actually making a commitment to go to the school and you're gonna take a tour and you wanna meet with a coach, you do need to ask. And I would do that in advance because again, uh, college swim coaches are in season at this point um, across all division levels. So they're pretty busy people. They are more than happy to meet with you. Don't get me wrong. But give them a heads up, nail down a time and date, Ask if they can set you up with a campus tour. Is there anything else that we should be doing? Maybe you want to sit in on practice. Maybe get to meet some of those, the team members, um, possibly. Coach is going to offer you a time to sit down in the office and just talk through a little bit more about their philosophy, what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, absolutely reach out, ask for a time to meet, say, hey, we are coming to campus and coaches are looking for that. That's a pretty high level of commitment on your end to make the trip out to that, that school and uh, the coach should honor that. 
Awesome. And, and this kind of goes to our talk earlier, Michelle. My daughter's high school coach is not very supportive at all, but her club coach is very supportive. How much will this affect her recruiting process? So it could affect it a little bit. It could affect it a lot. It could affect it not at all. So what I would say is probably try to lean on that club coach and the support they're going to be giving you guys as much as you can. But again, at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to the work that you guys put into the process as well. Um, how critical is it to play AAU during high school? Would camps be a good replacement for lack of playing AAU? What do you think, Danny? Hmm. Um, I wouldn't say camps as a replacement. Camps can be a good for a lot of different things. They can be good for exposure. They can be good for just skills development. If that's what you're looking for, camp all day. Um, but don't necessarily take much as a replacement. See it as like you are adding to your portfolio for a coach. And again, just be uh, have a plan, um, you know, have, have a purpose with all that stuff. Awesome. Well, perfect. So um, we'll probably wrap it up with that. One last comment from Ernesto that I think is probably hopefully uh, a good beacon to everyone else out there. He said, thank you for all of your help and advice. We've used your program and it's helped out so much. We will definitely continue to use it. So um, that's our main, main goal for you guys is just for you to be successful in the recruiting process. We really just want to empower and enlighten and educate families on the steps that they can be taking to be successful and put themselves in the best position for their futures. Anything you have to add to close this with? Nah, yeah, happy to help you guys. I mean, feel free to reach out to Kyle Winters, myself, Danny Koenig. Any questions you guys have specific to your situation, we'd be happy to answer those. That is why we exist, to help families through this process navigate these dark waters and ultimately achieve your dream for playing in college. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions or uh, comments that we didn't get to in there, feel free to throw them in. Uh, reach out to us directly. We're more than happy to follow up with you guys. Uh, Tommy Myers behind the camera will uh, let you let us know if you guys have any other questions that we didn't get to. But otherwise, we'll be back next Tuesday. Hopefully, Danny will be a little bit more of a staple because obviously he's pretty good at this. But otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your week and happy fall season. Yeah, see you soon.